to 9-11 because not all the the great anthrax researchers have have related them to 9-11 and not all of them have been willing to say that 9-11 was a fraud. They know they know anthrax. They know the anthrax attacks were a fraud. Mm-hmm. But but they don't all realize 9-11 was too. And you kind of have to see the two together. Yes. Um, so I'm not sure. Would you like me to sum up uh, why uh, I think they're connected or how they're well, connected? Well, fir- first I'd like you to describe when they occurred um, and maybe describe a couple of the letters that were associated with them and what what it appeared from your uh, semantic, your li- you know, your literary analysis of the letters, what they, what the subtexts were, what the subliminal messages of the letters were, and then talk about the uh, the evolution of the official account of the anthrax attacks, um, you know, who made them, what they contained, etc., as that unfolded. Okay. I guess I'm asking you to talk about everything. That's a big <laughs> order. Well, anyway, I'll start with the, the letters themselves. There were uh, several letters that were sent out, but only a couple were preserved. Most of these letters, by the way, went to the press, um, or I should say the media more generally, not all to newspapers. And... Um, a couple went to Democratic senators, Leahy and Daschle. Now, the first anthrax letter that was recovered, uh, and you can find this on the FBI website, it has the uh, date at the top, which is 9-11. It's actually written 09-11-01, so it writes 9-11 at the top. And the next letter that was recovered, by the way, which was mailed much later, has exactly the same date at the top. So let's just stop and think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, these people are trying to tie in their action to the 9-11 attacks. There's no evidence whatsoever that these were actually mailed on 9-11. But they put the date 9-11 in big printed letters right at the top. And they're saying to us, okay, you know, we're the same people. And uh, so here's what the first letter reads. And this is, you know, it's hand printed. It says, this is next. Take penicillin now, penicillin being spelled wrong. Death to America, death to Israel, Allah is great. Okay, that's it. It's short, okay? And it has it has anthrax. Um, I think they had about two grams, as I recall, of anthrax in each of these letters with about uh, a trillion spores per gram, if I remember correctly. Highly, highly, highly concentrated, highly refined, highly dangerous, especially the ones sent to the senator. So I look at the letter and I say, okay, first thing, they're obviously trying to tie it into 9-11. We're the same guys, hello, here we are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, then obviously they're uh, they're saying, you know, we're, we're, we're extremist Muslims. You know, this is, a, this is like a parody of the guys that are being shown on TV all the time, waving their fists, at death to America, death to Israel. Uh, yeah. You know, Allah is great. Um, they spell penicillin wrong. The, both letters are written in clumsy English. Uh, and I the mean, handwriting is real rough. They look yeah, real yeah, crummy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I have to say, okay, I have to say when I read these, I think of old Hollywood movies where, right. you know, White guys with shoe polish on their faces pretending to be Indians say stuff like, uh, you know, uh, red man uh, kill he big uh, white man. We me got him anthrax. Uh, me kill him lots. You betcha. You know, in other words, it's you know, it, 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 it's it's, a, it's all kinds of you know racial stereotypes and so on. So that the idea is that somehow these guys have. In their letter, in their envelope, and I'm, I'm speaking now especially of the letters <coughs> to the senators because that anthrax was a bit different than the other ones. This is highly sophisticated, weaponized anthrax, which is extremely difficult to prepare and obviously came from highly sophistic- sophisticated scientific laboratories. So here you've got this highly sophisticated product, and then you've got these guys who are so stupid and so ill-trained that they can't do like a spell check, you know, they can't yeah. get someone to proofread it for idiomatic English. And so I look at that and I say, you know, what what's going on? What is the message here? Now, it could be that, that the people who put this together are just stupid and that they're not aware of this contradiction. 
but I don't think they were stupid. I think there there's a double message because they're supposed to be indicating to us. Um, and by the way, some of this is speculation, and I don't normally speculate publicly when I talk about these issues. But sometimes, as long as we make it clear it is speculation, it's important to do. So yeah. I'm saying I think there's I think we're being told there's a double perpetrator. There are the field operatives, there's the guys on the ground who, you know, are writing this in their crummy handwriting and misspelling penicillin and dropping it in the mailbox. And these these are guys like so called Al Qaeda, right? Like the nineteen hijackers. I mean they're extremist Muslims so called and they're this and they're that. But then behind them somehow is the, the supplier of the anthrax. And this obviously is not Al-Qaeda, who is in no position to produce this kind of sophisticated process. So who is it? And it's pretty clear it's, it's meant to be Iraq. Um, so what I'm saying is that uh, there's lots of corroborating evidence that these letters and the anthrax in them are supposed to be telling us that there are two perps working together. Now, let me just quote from October 15th, the Wall Street Journal. Uh, they have a featured article on the anthrax mailings. Several, I'm quoting now, several circumstantial links to Osama bin Laden and his al-Qaeda network are already known. Okay, so there's al-Qaeda involved. But bin Laden couldn't be doing all this in Afghan caves. The leading supplier, the leading supplier suspect has to be Iraq. And let me quote from roughly the same time, just I think a day before, The Guardian, which says this, American investigators probing anthrax outbreaks in Florida and New York believe they have all the hallmarks of a terrorist attack and have named Iraq as prime suspect, as the source of the deadly spores. Their inquiries are adding to what U.S. hawks say is a growing mass of evidence that Saddam Hussein was involved possibly indirectly, with the September 11th hijackers. And then they go on to talk about strikes, military strikes on Iraq could be imminent. So what we get here, what we got very stridently and repeatedly from U.S. media during October 2001 was the idea <clears throat> that the anthrax attacks, first of all, were the second blow in a series of blows of the United States that they were from essentially the same groups. You know, they had done 9-11, now starting a week later, they're doing the anthrax, and that there were two parties involved, and that they were al-Qaeda, based at that point in Afghanistan, so we have to invade Afghanistan, and Iraq, so we're going to have to invade Iraq. We heard this message again and again. ABC News several times said that they had independent, credible sources that said that an analysis of the anthrax spore showed that they were coated with bentonite, which is a substance that the Iraqis used to weaponize their anthrax, and that this was, therefore, Saddam Hussein's signature. Now, this was all false, by the way, and was quite quickly, quite quickly proven to be it was complete fabrication. And ABC, ABC has refused to this day to reveal their so-called independent, you know, confidential sources for this baloney. Right. But the point is, it, I think it's pretty clear, and Philip Saracen uh, makes this point very well in his 2006 book called Anthrax, Bioterror as Fact and Fantasy. His point is that the anthrax attacks were clearly intended to expand the war on terror to include Iraq, and that they were mm -hmm. fraudulent, that they were fraudulent, that they were an inside job, so on and so forth. So uh, I think that what I'm trying to say is even a careful reading of these letters uh, can give you hints about this. The crude letter, the sophisticated substance inside. And there's another thing to look at here, which is quite striking when you think about it, and that is that there was a military exercise, a one of these big simulations they run, three months before 9-11 in Washington at Air Force Andrews uh, base called uh, Operation, I don't know if it was Operation, but anyway, Dark Winter. Okay, so what was, what was Dark Winter? Dark Winter 
was a simulated bioweapons attack on the United States. Now, in, in this simulation, it was smallpox rather than anthrax. But in other respects, it, it bears an uncanny resemblance to what happened three months later. Um, as the simulation unfolds and the panic escalates in the United States and the deaths escalate and so on, it eventually becomes clear that Iraq is the source of the end of the smallpox. Uh, letters are mailed to the media with smallpox uh, materials in them, just as happened later. And in this exercise, Iraq uses an intermediary group, which is I, know, I don't believe it's explicitly called Al Qaeda. But one assumes that it's made up of um, Muslims an intermediary on the ground group to do to actually deliver the material okay and it seems to me that that uh, that, that that was scripted that was fiction and what became clear pretty soon was that what happened in october was also scripted it was also fiction all this stuff about al qaeda you know and iraq delivering this anthrax you know it was it was fiction and this fiction fell apart quite quickly and that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons it's important to discuss it, because 9-11, to untangle that one, took us quite a while. I mean, I think we've untangled it pretty well now. We've, yes. proven, we've proven that the official story is false, and we can go into that later. But with anthrax, my gosh, you know, by November, there were, you know, uh, important figures already saying, I think by November, Tom Ridge, his... Full uh, Department of Homeland Security hadn't been uh, established. I think it was just called an office at that time. But I assume Ridge hadn't hadn't been appointed yet when this operation was planned, and therefore they hadn't brought him into the loop. He hadn't been briefed because there he was in November saying, "Well, actually, you know, there isn't any bentonite in this stuff. It, uh -huh. it doesn't. It doesn't have an Iraqi signature." And by January, by January of 2002, he was saying, you know what, guys, it, it looks like it was made in our own labs, you know, because it's the AIM strain of anthrax, which is essentially was first isolated in the United States, shared among U.S. labs and U.S. allies' labs. It wasn't shared with al-Qaeda. Iraq didn't have it. And, and the way it was weaponized with the use of silica, to make it more easy to aerosolize the anthrax. All of this looked like American methods that were used in a very small number of U.S. military and intelligence laboratories. And so this was already this was already coming out within a few months, you know. And by the time um, let me just grab the paper here. Uh, by the time of August October 2002, the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology publishes their new, their little newsletter, which I've got right in front of me, they were asked to examine the anthrax. And, you know, they were set up to do it, so they did it. And they found, yep, it was weaponized, it was aerosolized, um, and, but it wasn't, it wasn't the method the Iraqis use. Here's what they say, I'm quoting now. There was silica added, so they say silica prevents the anthrax from aggregating making it easier to aerosolize, in other words, to disperse in the air, which is what kills <laughs> people. Significantly, we noted the absence of aluminum with the silica. This combination had previously been found in anthrax produced by Iraq. So they're exonerating Iraq. They're, they're laying waste to this whole story. I can only assume that there were key players within the military intelligence uh, community that just weren't brief. They weren't brought in on this, and so this was a major goof. Mm -hmm. So the anthrax story fell apart very quickly, and and you know by by the beginning of 2002, the FBI had to deal with the fact that this stuff, which was which killed Americans, it killed five people, it infected 17 others, and wounded some of them very badly, caused panic in the nation was apparently meant to threaten and possibly kill two senators who could have blocked the passage of the Patri U.S. Patriot Act, that this whole thing had was a false flag operation. It, it really was. I mean, the, the FBI now admits that, okay? In other words, it was done by somebody, or buddies in the plural, within the U.S. military intelligence community who pretended to be extremists. 